All right, to turn the base of this, um, you can use vacuum chucks, you can use the remounting jaws. I'll be using the longhorn chuck. I, I found this to be a pretty good option. Um, the only downside to it is the RPM maximum on this is 600. So you're not cutting really efficiently when you're trying to shear scrape and do stuff on the bottom of the bowl. Uh, but the benefit is I can just mount it directly into my chuck jaws and I don't have to take all my jaws on and off or have a dedicated chuck for it. Um, but I'll show you a couple tips I've learned with this. Um, instead of having this in your chuck and then putting the piece in there and trying to tighten it down, I found the best way is just putting your piece on your lathe bed and then dropping this over the top and adjusting those plates. And that'll help it find its center point a lot better. And then you can start snugging up the grippers. So once they get a little bit finger tight, then I'll start working around in kind of a star pattern. That way you get even pressure, you don't push it too far off center. If you really want to be kind of pedantic about it, you could definitely go in an exact star pattern to tighten these up. All right, so we're about 15 inch pounds on these. Just kind of hand, you know, finger tight, not hand tight. I'm not really cranking these down. Um, if you get too crazy on the torque on these, it'll pull them out of center. Uh, but the nice thing is these silicone grippers, they don't mar the surface. So once I finish that, I don't have to worry about tool marks or anything being left behind up there but it does come at a cost of having a reduced turning speed. So if you went with like the Vicar adjusted jaws, you can turn a little bit faster with those. And those are a really good remounting jaw. I use those most of the time, um, but for smaller pieces like this, I, I kind of prefer the long just because I don't have to take all my jaws off. And then definitely snug that down on the long worth. Whenever you're returning a piece, Absolutely, we want to support this with our tail stock. All right, so I'll set my tool rest up, make sure that my grippers aren't going to come in contact with the tool rest because that would get really exciting. And then we'll bring up our tail stock for extra support. Uh, because our depth is pretty close, you know, we've got about a quarter inch, maybe three eighths in the bottom here. I don't want to have a big center divot that I'm going to have to turn out. So I'll use my pen mandrel, knurled nut, as a shim to still give me support, but it's not going to leave a big old dent in the bottom of the piece. Um, you could use a bunch of different things to do that, but that's just on my workbench, so might as well use it. Give that a quick spin, make sure we're not contacting, and then anytime I use these longboard chucks, I like to turn the lathe on, you know, completely stopped, and then I'll bring up the speed up to my turning speed, because I want to catch something going wrong before I'm at my turning speed, if it is going to go bad. So we're gonna go right up to that 600 RPM max that they recommend. Um, the other metal jaw versions, you can go a little bit faster, so those are some advantages, um, but they do come at a cost of having to install them and dis you know, take them off after each use. So we're running pretty true. Um, it's just a hair out around here, um, but we'll blend that in no problem. And then we'll reduce that contour here and we'll incorporate the foot into our overall piece. And with that lower turning speed, your feed rate needs to be a lot slower. Um, if I just try and jam that across, that's gonna tear the fibers out, so I need to be nice and slow and controlled. Okay, so now that we have most of that decorative recess cut out, we've got our foot established and our exterior trued up and our contour correct. I'll power sand the outside here and then the foot, and then we can remove our tail stock and then do some light cuts to get rid of that little nub, and then we'll sand the bottom. And because we're already at our 600 turning speed, that's our sanding speed as well. Now that we're unsupported, we want to be very careful with our cuts, make sure we're not taking too much material off. I just do really light passes 
I have had this come out of the chuck before and it gets really exciting. So if anything, make sure you wear a face shield just in case it does come off the lathe. But you can prevent all that if you just do light cuts, make sure you're nice and supportive and you don't have any catches. Okay, and then to get into this side, down into that undercut, I'm actually gonna come from this direction. So whenever you're in a chuck like this, if you hear a lot of weird noises, that means the chuck doesn't like the force being put on it. So take a lighter cut or change what type of cut you're doing. So like it's not liking that. You can hear that sound. Those little rubber grippers I think are hanging on for dear life. So instead of doing a bevel riding cut, I'll just use my scraper. All right. I think that's ready to sand. And since we can't really buff, bump the speed up a bit because of the chuck, we'll just buff it at that 600 RPM. All right, now that we buffed that with our scratch free, we can stop the lathe and take a look. It's a real treat to turn a piece like this and hopefully it'll turn into a really nice bowl I can use one day. So let's take this out of the chuck. We'll wipe down all the dust. We've got a bunch of debris up here near the top um, where the grippers are. Let's unscrew this. And then we'll just buff out those streaks we got by hand. And then we can throw our top coat finish on. Okay, once all the grippers are loose, you can slide those plates and it'll just come right out of the chuck. And then I'll take this off the lathe while I'm at it, just so it's out of my way. All right, so I think our bowl is complete. It's been an absolute privilege turning a piece of walnut this figured. Uh, the color and figure going through this is just absolutely gorgeous. Um, this will make a really nice piece to put in your kitchen. Uh, but hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. And if you want more wood turning videos, go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel. But we'll see you guys next time.